So what's all this about? What's all these controls? What do they all do and how can you use them in your garage band song? Well, this is the Hammond organ synthesizer. Uh, the Hammond organ was produced from 1935 until 1974 and it was essentially a mainstay of the rock and pop industry, although it didn't start out that way. It was designed as a church organ, something to allow the church organist to practice anywhere but the church. So lots of these were sold in American homes in the 30s and 40s. So what we've got here is a load of draw bars, that's what they're called, and these are akin to organ stops. So that means when they're pushed all the way in, the sound is off. So if I play a note, let's play this note, C4, C3 maybe. You can still hear things in the background. You can hear the, a, a very faint sound. Now that is essentially GarageBand's way of simulating the imperfection that was present in the original organ where the generators wouldn't quite be switched off. So you have a tiny bit of what they call leakage. Now the third slider along here, the, what, the first white one, is called the fundamental. So it's the pitch that you would get on a piano. So C3 on a piano would sound like this. The next slider up on the same note on the keyboard is an octave up, and the C above that. So you, the idea is that you can start mixing these sounds together on your single note. The next white one is the next octave. And then the last one is the octave above that. So you've got four octaves on one note. Now, the black ones in the middle are slightly different notes. You've got the fundamental here. But that's a G. That would be like playing this one. The idea is that all of these notes are in what's called the harmonic series, which is how sounds are made up. Um, most synthesizers are subtractive synthesis, but actually this is additive synth synthesis. You start with nothing and you're adding bits and pieces together to get your sound. So if I just, uh, that's a G, and there's another G up here, but then we've also got an E, we've got the major third. Now this really does uh, underlying what the harmonic series is. There's meant to be another one there, but it's out of tune naturally. So Hammond didn't include it on his original design. So we've got the fundamental here. Then we've got these two brown ones to the left. Now what they're called are sub uh, harmonics or sub partials. So you've got an octave lower there and then the fifth that comes above this. So very often, if you set your organ sound up on a keyboard, it'll sound quite muddy. You know, usually you'll have a piano like this. You open the organ patch up and you get this. So it sounds quite low. So the idea with a Hammond is to just stick it up the octave and you get these nice um, fundamentals and the subharmonics. This the first three open is the classic jazz sound combined with this thing here, the percussion. Now what the percussion does is it puts a little chime at the beginning of the note. Now this was designed in the 50s when organs started getting used in jazz combos and the idea was that the right hand organ solo had to have a bit of bite to it. And that's what that is. So third harmonic means that you get this. So it's basically this note. It's the third harmonic above your fundamental. You can hear it's more of a chime. You also have a second harmonic, which is this one here. So the idea was that the same generators in the Hammond gave you the percussion as well. So it's quite useful, really. We also have something called chorus here. Now what chorus does is it adds um, a note very slightly below and slightly above and varies those to create a sort of an ensemble effect. So 
all of these sounds, they should be familiar to really anyone who's listened to rock and pop music over the last 60 years, really. Um, there is another thing here, down here. Now, this is called rotation. Uh, it was actually known as the Leslie speaker in the old days. Um, Hammond made his organ, made a speaker system to go with it, and then one guy decided he'd buy one of these Hammond organs, but he didn't buy the speaker because he thought he could make his own and make it better. And actually, it was, came, became the choice. And that man's name was Don Leslie, and he came up with something that would throw the sound around the room, hence these little trumpets up here. The idea being you have a slow setting, where you can hear the sound sort of rotating around the stereo image. If you've got headphones on, it's really, this sort of becomes easier to explain. And either the speakers revolve slowly or they revolve quickly. But there's no in-between setting. It's either slow or fast, but that's enough because it also takes a while to get from slow to fast. back down again. So it's actually pretty true to the original, which was motors and belts and all that sort of thing, which is why it takes a while to speed up and slow down. So there you are. There is your Hammond organ sort of um, setup. Now, when you're recording with this, your best bet is to get the drawbar settings right in real time, not necessarily the notes, because you can't adjust these afterwards as you can on maybe Logic Pro X or, you know, the professional software where you can tweak drawbar settings. GarageBand will store them, they will store these settings and also the fast and slow rotation and the chorus on and off. Most of it is stored, it's just the, the fact that you can't change them afterwards and I'll demonstrate that now. Okay, so some of my notes weren't together there, but it doesn't matter because actually you can edit those, but you can't change the drawbars, so it's important to get these right. So if I just listen to that, you should see the drawbars moving. The only thing that you don't see moving is the slow, fast rotation when it switches on and off, but you see it up here when it speeds up, and of course you can hear it. If I click edit on here, you can see all of the notes, but at the bottom you see something called rotation, and there it is. So, now I think I may have picked this up in the beginning of a bar because actually it worked that time, but you can hear it, you can hear it working and you can see the drawbars working. So if I just go back into my um, edit window here and just clean up those notes, suddenly the thing becomes just a little bit nicer to listen to, and you also uh, quantize everything. If I click Done, and then go into Settings, Track Settings, Quantization, I want eighth notes there, because there was nothing quicker than that. So let's see what happens now. Now that's quite loud at the moment. Ideally, in a track, you want the Hammond quite low. So if I just um, find an instrument, I'm not gonna play the drums in, I'm just gonna get um, a drummer in instead. There we go. 
and I'm going to get a bass guitar as well. So that's drummer done. It's incredible how quickly you can get a drum track down. You just specify what you want and it does the rest. How lovely. So bass, let's just get a... Um Okay, so there's my mix, there's my bass, my drums, and my Hammond organ. So, ideally, I'd want the bass and the drums to be working together with the Hammond a little bit lower. So I'm going to get an acoustic guitar sound now, and I'm just going to put... and play that with it, and then mix that Hammond in. So there you go, there's the Hammond sat in your mix.